Hey, how you doing? It's Rick Claus, Senior Technical Evangelist at Microsoft Canada. This is a screencast of the demos for a session that I presented at TechEd North America, TechEd New Zealand, and TechEd Australia, and it's called Get Out of Dodge, Migrating to Windows Server 2008 R2 X64. In case you're wondering, those codes for North America, WSV310, New Zealand was WSV302, and Australia was SRV307. Want to find out more about me? Check out my main website at regularitguy.com or about.me slash rickclaws. The fifth and final demo in this particular series is called Certificate Manager, sorry, Certificate Services Migration. It's not about the tools, it's all about the process. This one is a lovely command line uh, migration experience using the cert util and some backup routines. Again, there's no PowerShell in this particular one, uh, but lots of command line stuff, the very particular switches that are involved. Home base server W2K8R2-DC. My main source server is 2003 Certificate Services as an enterprise root. He's not a domain controller. He's just enterprise root as a member server of the domain. His name is Contoso-Cert. A target server of Server 2008R2 core install, once again, is called Contoso-Cert as well. He is a standalone server at this point in time. After I finish the migration process of exporting the stuff on the source, I basically take him out of the domain, bring this guy into the domain, join him up, and then continue on from there. That's why this name is the same. Finally, wrapping it up with Windows 7 as my client verification system called Win7 Client with some tools to make sure everything all worked and everything's all good. So, let's get started. So here we are in our Contoso-Cert machine running 2003 Certificate Services. This is all going to be done by the command line called certutil.exe. And very first off, I just want to get a list of all the templates that are in use on this individual server. And I'm going to dump it as a file to hyper-v-1 slash migration data slash certs. And I'm call this uh, templates. Next up on Util, I'm going to have to do a get the registry parameters for the CA CSP. And once again, dump the results of that guy there out to the Hyper-V migration data cert directory structure. It basically just saves all the settings for future reference. Now looking at the certificate authority from the MMC snap-in, I can see that there's the option for revoke certificates. If this is going to take a longer period of time, you can extend the length of your uh, CRL revocation list so that uh, you'll be able to finish this off before it happens. So. I'm just going to leave it at a week, but you could put that out further if you needed to. Most migrations should be able to take place fast enough. And then using the standard backup procedures, I'm just going to go ahead and back up the CA and also back up the cert and databases as well. So I want to make sure I turn on the check of the private key and also the database and certificate database logs. I'm going to store this into my Hyper-V migration data share. Just warns you it has to be empty of any previous backups you might have done. I'm obviously going to lock this down with a very strong password that I know what it is for the private key in the CA. And boom, it's done doing its backup and I'll be using that to restore the bulk of the data from the other machine. I want to make sure that no new certs are issued, so I'm going to have to temporarily stop my certificate services on this one particular box. I want to back up the registry key that contains all the configuration parameters for the certificate service. So it is down to local machine, system, current control set, services, and then scroll down until you see the uh, cert SVC right there. And then Choosing the configuration container, just right mouse click on that and say export. I'm going to save this 
up to my temporary storage location once again, Hyper-V slash migration data slash cert. I'm going to call this guy simply regkey.reg. I'm going to use that to quickly bring in all the settings on that core box when I'm done. Now, last but not least, it's a little bit uh, unnerving, but you actually have to go and remove certificate services from this box while it's domain joined in order for it to properly get rid of any references to uh, this particular server up in the AD and allow the other one to assume its role. Now this does leave the database and also leaves the cert key on this box just in case you needed to back out again. You could reinstall them and off you go. I'm just going to shut this guy down and then remove him. Okay, so over here on my Hyper-V server where all my virtual images are running, you can see that the old guy, Contoso-Cert, is actually in fact off. And the new guy is actually up and running. He has the exact same name and IP address, so he's currently unplugged. So let me just bring back these settings here and plug him into the proper network. You obviously can't have this guy up and running with the same computer name and address uh, while the other guy is still active. He's only member server. He's not joined in the domain just yet. We'll have him added in here in just a minute. So back on my 2008 domain controller, there is the old user account or computer account I'm going to delete. And then now I can bring in the uh, core file server, or sorry, the core certificate server. So here's his remote control from the Hyper-V manager. He already has the proper address and everything else. So quick S config, you can see he has the proper name, Contoso-Cert. He's part of a work group though. So let's uh, join him into the domain. So choose one, choose domain, and want to join. He's going to join corp.contoso.com. There's my administrative creds. And that brings him into the domain. I'm not going to change the computer name. I just hit the wrong key there, so just cancel out of that. And I'm going to restart this guy so that he comes up as a domain member and fully functional as a member server inside the box. So here he is on reboot. It's going to log on. Don't forget if you log on to this guy after doing the restart that you uh, will have to ensure that you're not logging in as a local administrator like it is here, but instead as a domain admin that has the appropriate rights to search stuff. So here is corp slash administrator with password. I'm just going to adjust this window here so it fits better inside the remote control session. Okay, now the real work begins. He's now a domain member. He has uh, all the proper addresses. Now let's get the files and all the different pieces of certificate services installed on him. Installing certificate services on core is a little bit tricky. There is a VBS script that uh, has been written out that you can download and use. So first off, all those files are all up on a network server. To keep things simple and my command line shorter, I'm just going to go and copy down um, that certificate migration directory that we used down to the local box. So I was quickly mapping a drive and then doing a good old robocopy. of the cert directory down to my local c backslash source slash cert 
and make sure I bring down all files and all subdirectories with a slash z and a slash e. There we go. Changing down to the local guy. And then let's start building this guy back up to where he should be to be a functional certificate server. Once again, it's the cert util command line. Now I've got to go ahead and use this to import the private key that was previously saved. So there's w2k8r2-cert.pfx. Put in the password. Oh, came back with a failed. Uh, oh yeah, it's actually w2k3r2. So let's go in and try that again. Let's fix this up. Put in the password. There we go. So that got the private search onto the local box. Now here I need to actually find the identification of what the private store is on the local system in order for the import process and the backup process to work correctly. So I'm just going to do a query of my own store to find anything referenced to the key container. And there, the very first one is the key container I'm looking for of the machine. I'm just going to copy that. And the name of the VBS file is called set up the CA on core. You can do a search for that. I'm just going to go ahead and execute this with a C script set up CA dash VBS. And I'm going to include the reference of my local store with the key container reference. So here is a install enterprise root, certificate services. And here's the paste of the information for the store. Close that off. And go ahead and run the script and it's going to go off and create a log file you can troubleshoot if you needed to it's going to load the appropriate uh, dll's to make sure they're all working you can see it go through here and do the install verifying stuff bringing it up again if you tried to do this without that cert originally being installed or if you did not correctly reference your local store it would fail at this point with a bad error message and here it is setting up the certificate services for contoso-search.corp.contoso.com. A little bit of cleanup stuff is I need to go off and stop the certificate services restore that just took place with installing it. So stop certificate services. This is in order for me to be able to do a restore of the backup file. So let's uh, get this restore process working here. Restore the database, the location where it was saved. Remember I copied that down from the network location. So that was the location there. It brings in the database, brings in the log files, it does a full restore. I have to go and restart the services again, which is fine. I'm then going to go in and bring in the configuration data that was saved from the registry with the import of the regkey.reg, which worked. And if you remember correctly, the templates that were saved previously came out in a list look like this. I've gone ahead and basically changed that over into a comma separated file. That I'm going to use for the next command line. So that's the exact same data just with commas in it. So it's going to copy that. And then Bring that down to make sure the templates were loaded correctly with sort util. With a set CA templates and then a plus sign and then bringing these guys back in again. Paste. Now in this case I didn't have any custom ones. They were already all present. So they were all good and happy to be there. And then let's start that certificate server and see if it works correctly with my client.
So over here in my Windows 7 box, I'm actually going to connect up to the certificate services. It's going to give me an error message at first because it's trying to look at the local box. And I'm going to connect up to the remote certificate server. And then type in Contoso cert. Fully qualified, keep it simple. And then you'll see here that it's in working order. It's got a green checkbox on it, which is good. If I had any revoked certificates, I could see it. There's all my issued ones, so they're all there and working, but there hasn't been any newly issued ones just yet. I've got nothing pending, nothing failed, and then there's my list of templates that I had that are all fine. Now, to start this, I'll really check it out to make sure it's working fine. I'm actually going to go in and load up my local certificate store and ask for a certificate to be issued to me. So I'm just going to zoom in here to my personal store. In this case, I'm going to request a new certificate. It's basically query any Active Directory. Come up here and basically say, here is your enrollment policy for the directory. So I know that it's working correctly on my AD side of things for my previous steps. I'm just going to check off and use a basic EFS for encryption certificate that comes down. Go ahead and do the enroll. Boom, there it happens. I've got it given to me. It was successful. I can even view it and I can see that it was issued out by W2K3R2-CERT as the name. It is valid up until 2012. Everything's great. Certificate services has been migrated and working successfully.